Hi guys, my name is Meads. This is going to be a review for Devil Toys 1 6 scale TQ63. And uh, this is actually quite uh, interesting. I've actually seen this in uh, Big Bad Toy Store, and which got me intrigued since I've been uh, getting a few of the 6 Vision. Um, I got the Bonehead. And this kind of reminded me of that. And uh, particularly uh, the accessory that comes with it got me really intrigued. So uh, on my trip to San Diego Comic Con, uh, one of the boots there is actually bait. I'm not too familiar with them, but my guess is they kind of distribute uh, kind of like these designer toys. And they have this on their boot, which is really cool. And this is an exclusive version. I got that uh, sticker here. <laughs> the Comic Con exclusive by uh, bait. Yep. But it's made by Devil Toys. It does have the brown shipper box here, and uh, it's quite tall. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. That's pretty much it for this. So we'll just take that aside. And inside, uh, you we have this uh, colored box. It's actually quite nice. I, I like this. Um, got the nice lettering on the side here. There's even even. A silhouette or kind of like a light art of him on the bottom here and on the back side uh, a devil toys it's a Hong Kong company and then fortress there's like, quite a bit of stuff here yeah and more stuff on to the side here yeah, I like this box. It's quite nice. All right. So let's take a look inside. So for this one, um, it opens from here. I'm just gonna flip this up here. There we go. It has some uh, foam packaging, which is good. So the first layer, and it's like in, he's in the coffin. <laughs> so we'll, we'll take this out here. Here we go. All right, so uh, this is just a quick comparison with the Six Vision uh, Bowhead, and I always like uh, to do this, like trying to uh, find uh, figures that kind of work well with each other, even though they are made by two different companies. So yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, the reds are a bit uh, different. I'm not sure if it shows uh, in the camera, but TQ, or we'll probably just call him Tech. Tech CC3 has more of a richer red as opposed to uh, Bonehead here. Yeah. But yeah, they look great. And I'm starting to like this particular line. Despite being very expensive, that's the only drawback. But. Uh, they definitely does stand out and quite uh, intriguing, especially with uh, the mask thing. Alright, so uh, I'm going to take out Bonehead and uh, continue with the review. Alright, so uh, let's first start uh, with the head here. And uh, he does have a really cool design. I like this. He kind of have like the, the skull. And uh, with that uh, V fin here, kind of looks like uh, a bunny. Which kind of reminds me of uh, a friend's uh, art skull bunnies <laughs> and on top of that you have this uh, pirate here with uh, two swords and if you look closely it does have the resemblance of a Gundam head and there is actually a crossbone Gundam I think the X2 one has this uh, V fin kind of like has that feather and yeah, it does remind me of a crossbone Gundam. <laughs> Maybe the artist has uh, a bit of a, uh, or took some of the idea from that. But nonetheless, it looks cool. I like it. The more reasons I, I want it because it does have a Gundam head. You got the, this top part here with a camera for front and back. Really nice. Moving on, you have this hooded uh, sweater here. I've tried putting this all the way here, but the helmet is just too big, and if even if you try it, it, it won't work. It seems like the whole thing is just shifted out. 
so I'm not gonna do that. You got your strings here, which is um, functional. You can uh, tighten the loop or the hoodie. I'm just gonna pull it back here. And also you have a functional zipper, which is really nice. So you can zip this all the way down, but it does not uh, separate. So, but you get to see the shirt inside, it says Bait, Superior Quality Goods, Manufacturing Company International since 2011, which is the same as the back here. And you have B8 for Bait. <laughs> I got that. Logos on the side and on the front. You have functional pockets here. As you can see, you can tuck in the hands. Quite nice. And now for the shoulder here, you can probably take this off and let me see here up to that part kind of see the inner workings here seems like there's a ball joint in there with a bicep swivel but I'm just gonna hide that there a fairly good uh, rotation although you just get, gotta be really careful with the clothing get your elbow bent fairly good then you got your wrist joint here yep now for the hand it's kind of interesting it's um, molded in gray uh, with a bit of a white that might have been painted on so that's that part moving down you have the pants here really nice uh, texture and you do have this chain here and this chain has a clip here one of those uh, quick release and it's functional you can take this off chain is nice it hooks on the to the back and now you have pockets all this is there are actual pockets here and there the bottom here and even on the back so that's quite nice Articulation on the hips, it's a bit limited. And again, with the clothing, got to be a little careful to the knee. There we go. Quite nice. And uh, you have your ankle here. The, the ankle is a little bit weird for me. Um, it's You got that double joint there. But unfortunately, mine is a bit loose. This is... A bit loose and for sometimes for him standing up it actually is not too bad but if he just gets a bit off balance he just tips over so have him standing just like this I'm gonna find that right balance and it's fine <laughs> but maybe other poses were maybe bent his knee a little bit and that's something that's kind of hard to, to do. Just getting it the right way for the pants to crease. Because sometimes if you just do it like this way, it kind of creases like this and it looks a bit weird. It's not like the right way for pants to naturally crease. But you just got to have to play around with it. Let me do a certain pose here. <laughs> there we go so the ankles is fine uh, he can still do certain poses but uh, yeah it, it's a bit loose just a little minor thing but it still can stand so that's what matters moving on you got the shoes here quite nice I kind of forgot which uh, shoe company has this design with the stripes but uh, even has the bottom sole got that texture it's nice I like it and that's pretty much it for this figure I mean there's a bit of accessories all right so um, let's start or let's go oops that's what I'm talking about. The ankles. All right. Stay. All right. 
I might have a problem uh, displaying him. Hopefully he doesn't do a dive. Probably have to leave him on the on his back. But yeah, I might have to get those stand. That yeah, that's probably the best way. Moving on, we have an uh, extra pair of hands, and that's it. You only get two pairs. I kind of wish they give you a closed fist, but uh, this one doesn't come with it. But maybe this one will be close enough, but yeah, this is for holding the weapons. So um, I'm just going to use the right hand here. Pop this out. Uh, at first, it's easier to pop out the whole joint out. Yeah. So you just you gotta have to play around with that wrist joint and uh, put this on here. I always have a little bit of issue putting this on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a little bit tough. You may have to keep turning it, and I may have to do this off camera. That way, I, I can have a better focus on it. All right, I got it on. So what I've what I've done is I hold this with this way, while pushing the elbow forward. I'm pushing this way. I think that's probably the best way to kind of put the hand on the wrist. So there we go. A little bit of a struggle, but that's fine. Maybe I still need to kind of loosen it up a bit. So the first accessory is this a uh, pistol. I've seen the other weapon, but uh, this one is kind of unique. So this one, uh, he probably can hold this. Here, let me see if I can have him hold this, but... Uh, <laughs> it's uh, a bit tricky. Let me just hold it from this end here. There we go. And he can probably... Uh, Tuck it this in onto his pocket here. Let's see if that works. Ah, he probably could. There we go, or something. Or maybe it's uh, back pocket. But <laughs> it's it's a unique pistol. Or actually, yes, a machine gun. But uh, this one flips over. So you got your stock. And you have your handle here. This kind of reminds me of uh, the Robocop movie. I f can't remember which one, but I remember there was, I think, a kid who has a... Kind of like this. He just popped this open. Makes a foldable uh, sun machine gun. It's cool. I like it. Uh, there's not much uh, in terms of pay. I mean, there's a bit of a silver... Uh, kind of like a a little bit of weathering here and there but uh, it's just molded in one color so let's see if I can place this here there we go so it's 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 kind of like a pistol with a stock but kind of is like a little submachine gun yeah this is a bit odd on here I'm not even sure if that's where Seems like a, a laser sight, but uh, the bullet the bullet's probably coming out here, the bottom. It just looks a little odd for a weapon design, and it's really small. <laughs> kind of wish it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, but yeah, nonetheless, it's a nifty weapon that uh, folds out. Right then, and just another pose. Yep. So, uh, other than that, uh, let's get on to the next weapon. So, um, we're just gonna reposition him. Take this out. There we go. Alright, so the next weapon is this guy here. This is the butterfly knife. Or as we call it in Philippines, the balisong. Yep. And try to get him to stand without tipping over again. There we go. 
So the bully song or the butterfly knife, it's quite nice. I like it. I do have a little QC issue, which I, I don't really mind, uh, since it's not something that's uh, a functional thing that uh, has gone wrong. But basically, the clip here has. I'm not even sure if you can see that. Has a crack right there. So where it connects on one side, it cracks, but it still holds it. It's not really a big thing. I'm not sure if that's an inherent issue or something that just cracked as I turn this around. Who knows? But uh, this is nice. This whole thing is made of plastic. Uh, there's no die cast on it. And I'm happy there's no die cast since if it does, it's going to weigh it down. Yeah. So and this just opens up. So you got those hinges there. And you got this nice blade. Really cool. And you can even have him hold it one end here. Although it's kind of tricky because you have that. <laughs> you have this like four pieces here. Or, well, I mean, two pieces. And you have a lot of space in between. It could get a little scary when you're trying to kind of. Or for him to hold it. Because you're going to be like bending the plastic a little bit and stuff like that yeah so let me just have him in a certain post where he's opening it there we go it looks really cool it, it's just a huge blade kind of looks like also the uh, like a razor like for a barber all right so uh as we continue we're just gonna keep folding and we have the clip right there and there we go. We'll probably just adjust it. Yep. Right then, uh, for him to hold this, it's. I think we have to slide the fingers through that the part in the middle. Uh, it, it's a little bit tough to do it uh, behind the camera, so I'm gonna do it off camera again. Alright, and I did a quick search. Um, it, it does come from a Filipino artist, so that's hence why we have that. And they call it the Bali Sword, as opposed to the Bali Song. Uh, or the Butterfly Sword, basically. Yeah, quite nice. So um, I managed to put it on. It's not quite like a, a, like a perfect match, because of just a gap in between. Gotta have to get in there somehow. But it works. It's quite nice. And uh, he can hold this without much problem at any angle. So that's quite nice right there. Alright, and continuing on, let me just try one of the poses where he's uh, kneeling down. There we go. There we go. And lastly, we got com uh, Loyal Companion. <laughs> Sorry, I got time tied there. And I believe this is SCRH or something of that uh, matter. It's a cool looking dog here. And actually, the name SRCH, it's basically search without the vowels. Just realized that. <laughs> Alright, so this one has some uh, articulations to it. You got a ball joint for the neck here. And you might have a bit of movement here on the neck. Kind of like how it is for the tail, but it's really stiff. I don't really want to... Oh, there we go. As much as I don't want to try it, but it seems like there is articulation and there is. So you can kind of move it up a little bit and for him to look up. Yeah. Same thing with the tail, you can uh, lower it down, but probably hold it to the base. What I did there, don't do that. Don't uh, fold it in from here. You might, or we might break that, so. Um, another thing, uh, articulation, you got the legs here. You can wig wiggle even ankles for each one. But unfortunately, which I have a problem with this one, is this uh, 
articulation here onto the body. Now this doesn't have that, you know, side to side. It's just a simple, you cannot even twist this. There's no uh, swivel onto the each legs. But you can turn them, but to turn them, it's a bit uh, stiff. And you gotta be really careful. I'm not sure what's, how that's connected in there. Like this one, you can hear that creak. There we go. So it seems like there's a hex, uh, hexa hexagon uh, inside. Uh, yeah, it just creaks a lot. <laughs> All right, so let's put this on here and kind of just wiggle it. I'll try to push that back in there. Yeah, it doesn't ratchet, but it is really stiff. Like, as if you're gonna break it. Oh, <laughs> I just hate doing that. But, oops. But unfortunately, that's the only way to get him to a certain pose. And even then, it's kind of hard. Like, for him to sit down, getting just that right pose. Here, let me see if I can even do it. Get that folded up here. I don't know. And eh, maybe that's good enough. All right, so uh, let's get the uh, tech here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dog is cute. It does kind of work. Although I kind of wish the dog has a bit more articulation and not that creaking. Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Alright, uh, before I conclude the uh, review, um, a few things have that really bugged me is the loose joint. So I'm going to share a little bit of a, a quick fix to do that. And it's a temporary thing. It's not uh, permanent. And also one thing, I've tried swapping out the head because for bonehead, you can actually take this out. And it seems like it's the same ball joint, but it's just hard to take this out. I tried and I was unsuccessful. But it might have, they might have been using the same ball joint and it would be great if I'm able to take this out and that way you can have this head instead or a swap. So it's uh, good to have a little bit of flexibility or interchangeability. And uh, that, uh, while I'm doing that, this, the uh, it's a double, uh, kind of like a dumbbell. The other ball joint to the neck got really loose and his head was just like it's like a bobble head so um one of the quick fix for loose joint is the floor polish technique it's like pledge or future it's a clear floor polish you wick a little bit to the joint and you kind of exercise it and that should give you a little bit more friction and uh, that seems to work for this now getting back to the ankle joint i still have that issue why that it's a bit loose yeah that's quite loose there and when you pop this off I think it's because of it's a separate piece as you can see there and this is, is a bit more rubbery yeah so for this one which I kind of have a little fix on this it's a bit tighter now as you can see and that is great so what I did for a quick fix you grab a piece of a paper towel, so I, I just, you know, I rip a little piece of that, and we're gonna put that in. This will act kind of like a a little sleeve, and you can always remove it if you don't want it anymore, or replace it if it got it gets worn. And we're just gonna pop this back in. There we go. So make sure you just take a little bit, and uh, or that way it doesn't kind of sticks out. Uh, might have sticked out a little bit. I might have to clean that up a bit later on, but it's fine. I got the pants. And with that, this gives you a bit more uh, friction. And the ankle joint kind of, it's a bit more stable, which I like. So as I have him pose again, it's not tipping over as easily as before, which is great. 
So quick fix. And now here's a, a better figure. Because those little things, a loose joint, it kind of deters for, for having an awesome figure. Anyways, uh, got those fixed. There we go. I like this pose here. It kind of tucks in to one of the pockets. And maybe just have this on the back here. There we go. Probably have this pose. It looks really cool. I, I really like that the, the body sword. <laughs> and especially for people who know that weapon. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I really like this figure, despite being expensive, but it's awesome. And let me just pop Bonehead's head back on this other figure here. Have it on display next to him. There we go. Although I might have to give them in different poses, but yeah. Alright. And I think that's pretty much it for this review. I have to say uh, Bates uh, Tech 63 is an awesome figure. I like it. And uh, if I have to pick between the two of them, I'm leaning more to Tech. Uh, just, uh, I like the weapons. I like the, the overall. I mean, Bonehead's uh, design is great too. I like the helmet uh, specifically, but the bat... I mean, he does have that sword, he does have that uh, a hidden blade inside the bat, but yeah, I can't go wrong with the Bali sword. <laughs> but anyways, um, definitely, uh, I might continue uh, getting this, a big mite, although I'm, I'm really getting into this, uh, between these two particular figure sets. And I could have a gang, I have two gangs. <laughs> The one with the boneheads and the skulls. Uh, yeah, I think I could make it happen. Yeah. So again, um, this is a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. You can get the regular version. And actually there is a ghost version as well. I just checked the uh, Big Bad Toy Store. And those are going to be available. The ghost version is basically kind of like the inverted colors of the normal release, which is black. The ghost one is mostly white. I'm not sure if uh, the Boneheads has that uh, particular uh, color uh, scheme yet. They do have that gold one. It's kind of odd looking. But I like it. It's more of a suit as opposed uh, to this uh, jersey uh, sweater. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's about it for this uh, particular review. If you got questions, let me know. And that's about it. So until then, this is Meads. Thanks for watching.